God bless everyone. This is Rosemary Santiago from On Wings of an Eagle. We are transmitting from Casa de Fe Yahweh with Pastors Ramon and Diana Crespo, located at 104 Suffolk Street, Holyoke, Massachusetts. You're listening to DJ DJ One Ministries' website is djoneministry.wibbly.com. God bless David Silva and family at Spring Hill, Florida of Internet's Radio Join Force International dot org and Internet TV Join Force Family Network. Salvation TV on Roku Player Channels are Uniendo Fuerza Internacionalmente and Salvation Online. DJ One TV YouTube is also of Join Force Family Network. Connect with our ministry at Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, and Bamboozer. God bless brothers Junior and Ginny Soto from Puerto Rico. You will find them at banderadeamor.org. Available on Internet's Radio Join Force International.org. On Roku Player TV, Join Force Family Network. Programs is Vere with Veronica Torres, Monday 9 to 10 p.m. Punto de Vista with Lisset Melendez, Wednesday 8 to 9. Mujeres de Guerra with the Pastor Diana Crespo, 9 to 10 p.m. And the Spanish version, Sobre Alas de Aguila, with your servant, Rosemary Santiago. That will be Thursday, 9.30 to 10.30 p.m. And Praise Break with DJ One, Friday, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks one more time, Father. Thanks for your kindness, for your mercy, for all the ways, Lord, that you try to reach out to the people. I ask you, Lord, that you give me a clear mind, Lord, that I may speak from your heart. I ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Just want to take a time out to say God bless you, Melanie Lewis. I hope you continue listening. Uh, my, my heart, my heart wants you to reach out to God, especially during these times. So love you a whole bunch. God bless. Okay, so we have all these weeks we've been talking about the works of the Spirit. I'm now past the uh, works of the Spirit like towards the, the sinner. Now we've passed that area and we're dwelling right now in that of the uh, believers. Last week... I spoke about the seal and the earnest, but in order to keep connecting, I will have to be referring to certain scriptures so we can get a complete picture of what God is doing from the sinner. The Holy Spirit touches the sinner. We all have sinned and come short of his glory. I mean, sin has been done in so many ways it has manifested in the lives in so many ways a lot a little sin is sin there is no size of sin but what happens that the holy spirit starts speaking to the soul the soul was created by the only god the only existing god man makes their own gods of different types sizes species, whether they be rock or they be animal, but there's only one God, so that the soul cries out to the maker, and it just so happens that God is the creator. He defined everything about his living beings, and we are the crown, the crown of his creation. He made us in his image and likeness. So what happens when you're a sinner? You're separated. God being the creator, he owned us. 
He put us here on earth. Everyone has a function. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone is supposed to ask God, what is my purpose here on earth? So I'm trying to take you from the state of sin to when you already answer. So that soul has to cry out. That soul can only be filled by the desires of, of the creator, the one that made him, that knows what each and every one needs. So he sends the Holy Spirit. That's the other comforter. That's exactly the way the Lord Jesus Christ calls him. He says, you know, it's necessary that I leave. And when I do, there will come another comforter. Well, another means that there was one before him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He comforted the people that were afflicted. Isaiah chapter 61, one speaks of the idea, what he wanted, why he came. Let me, let me read it just a second. But let's see what Isaiah 61 says. Chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, good news, unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Now, the, and now he's talking about spiritual prisons. And that's the reason why the Lord felt it of importance to take on a physical body, to come down to save us from ourselves. And also because Satan has a tendency to shackle. You don't see him. You don't see the demons at work, but you see the results. You don't need to see them. You see the results. That's the way the, uh, the spiritual realm operates. Just like if God is in the issue, you know. God is in the issue. He will change a person from the inside and they will project it on the outside. And we're talking about the works of the Holy Spirit and we're answering and speaking over the seal and the earnest. I explained that earnest, which is the word arabon in Greek, it means to get a taste of something ahead of time. In uh, one time, you put money on something. If the thing didn't work, if that contract didn't work, well, you took your money back. But here, this is more, more deeper. We're talking about the spiritualness, the intimacy that God has with his creations, whereas first he takes on, on a body, he goes through all these stages, growing up just like anybody else, feeling, being tempted, then he's given his life. He says he gave it. No one took it from him. He decided to follow through the desire of his father's heart to restore us. So now you come to the Lord. You say, I'm sorry, Lord. I really am sorry for what I have done. I feel the hurt. I notice that I really lived a horrible, uncontrollable, unstable life. So now I need for you to forgive me. I know I'm not worthy. I know it should have been me up on that cross. But you have given your son as a gift. And I need to be forgiven. And this is where the Holy Spirit works on the very internal being. The very essence of who you and I are. And then he starts working on us. I'm going back to 2 Corinthians 1.22. 2 Corinthians 1.22. Who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit 
in our hearts. Right now, it's a little hard to get the picture, but in a little while, I'm going to start putting it in action with something that took place in Bible history, and then you'll understand a little bit more. It'll be a little bit more concrete. I said that the word earnest, it means an advancement of celestial blessings. Now, they're not talking about any any uh, monetary deal here. They're talking about something spiritual. Why it's necessary to explain it in a uh, secular, because a lot of people understand these things secularly. And you need to bring a spiritual truth using something that someone can understand. Like when we talk about the, uh, the sower of seeds, people understand if they live in the country, if they themselves plant, they're able to understand that when the Lord speaks of the word as a seed, they can understand what it's all about. So we go now to Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. What what is it all about? Someone buys a property. You have to pay money, right? You buy the property. And you decide that you're going to, for that property, you have some papers. It's signed, it's sealed, it has a date, it has a name. It tells you, just like uh, those who are homeowners, they have proof that they bought for such and such amount. So what happens? Since you bought the house, you can rearrange, you can do whatever you want with it. You can put things, you can take out things. You can rearrange, you can build a little bit more, you can take away from from an area. It's yours, right? So this is the idea that the Lord tries to transmit. The Lord is the creator of all creations. He was already the owner. He needed for people to come to repentance to restore that relationship we had at the very beginning, but we forfeit it. It says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us, all of us one way or another, we all have to go through the process of recognition that we are sinners, that we need to be saved, that we need the restoration of our relationship between the Creator and ourselves. So he came, the Lord Jesus Christ came to pay the price as the lamb, sacrificial lamb. That's the reason why when John the Baptist saw him, after I guess he was doing his fasting, and then he came to the community again, he was separating himself. For the Lord, he was being tempted by Satan, just like every human being. But the word says that he was tempted in all things, but he did not sin. So when he comes again to the community after all this preparation, John the Baptist just singles him out and he says, here is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. It was necessary. I didn't say he deserved it. I didn't say we deserved him to die for us. I said it was necessary to reconcile the human, his creation, the ones that were his from the very beginning. We had to be reconciled 
with the Creator. So that sin sacrifice was necessary. Let's go to 430 of the same scripture. Same book, or actually it's an epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 30. It says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Going back to the seal. Once we come to the Lord, once we accept the Lord as our only Savior, we are then sealed. We become his property. And the one that does the sealing is the Holy Spirit. That's the third person of the Holy Spirit. And not third, third in number. Just happens that his Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Those three are one. They are one in nature, one in thought, one in action. Blessing. Complete blessing. So now, the word sealed in uh, Greek, it's sfragizo. And why we are sealed, the Holy Spirit is also giving testimony that there's something exclusive by being a Christian. You don't look like anyone you don't act like everyone. You are separated. Once Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one, we must also become one. Are we in this world? Yes, we're in this world. We have our feet on the ground. We walk, go in and out of our house. We go to the community. We say hi to people. We go to the market, we go and do things almost like everybody else. The only difference is that we know that we are just in a pilgrimage. We do not belong to the system of the world. Even though we walk and think and act and have a job, we're lawyers and doctors and nurses, just like anybody else, but we do not belong to the thinking and the system of this world. We are sealed, we are separated, but we also have to give testimony. They have to see that we are different. That's why the Lord says, you know something? Don't fear or don't be too surprised because if you are hated by the world, they hated me first. And mind you, he wasn't even crucified yet, even though he had times where he appeared to them. This conversation he had before they had put him up on the cross. Let's go into 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. Just want to let you know that... Um, to be able to transmit the word of God, you don't have to scream. I want whomever is receiving the word of God to be comfortable. You're in your home. Maybe you take some coffee, hot chocolate, a soft drink. The important thing is that when you sit down and you pay attention, this word becomes like a seed you become like fertile soil. You will see that the very scripture has the capacity to explain things that nothing or no one else can. If you don't understand the word, all you got to do is ask the uh, author of this word. And like always in uh, Second Peter, in chapter 1, for those who might you know, come into the program a little afterwards. They've never uh, heard this before. I always like to repeat this because it lets you know that we can confide. We can really believe. It's sure. It's honest. It's the Word of God. There is no other book on the face of this earth that's like the word of God. 
So 2 Peter chapter 1, 19 to 21 says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Notice it says sure word of prophecy. Because nowadays they have all these kind of prophecies that are not sure. The only sure thing about them is that they can lead you away from the Lord. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, talking about Jesus Christ, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, not talking about this particular section of the book, it's talking about the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You have to know exactly, right? Ephesians 1, 13, 14. In whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. It is for the praise of his glory. Okay, what is the uh, main idea of the seal? Security. The Lord seals with his Holy Spirit, and he puts guards. Here, let's see what Job 36 says. 36, 7. 36, 7 says. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever and they are exalted. John 10, 27, 28. John 10, 27, 28. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. See? Sealed property, secure. He promises that we would be secure in his hands. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7. A lot of you may have read the word of God, but it's not so much reading it. We're not talking about a novel. We're not talking about, you know, any particular book. You have to have a mindset when you enter to find out if you really want to know the truth of the word, then you have to render to the author of the word to be able to understand. You have to have a fairly good relationship because our relationship starts getting better and better as time goes by. I've been in the Lord for 41 years. Doesn't mean I have all the answers. It just means that I understand that separated from him, I can do nothing. Without him, I can do plenty. I can do every sinful act. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about a almost like when you enter into an agreement in a company. Each one that has entered into that kind of a relationship, business relationship, neither one can move, neither one can do without the other because it's what makes that organization, that job, that industry move. Once people start going one way and another, then it messes up. It just doesn't work that way. You have to have the same mind. Revelation 7, 1 to 3 says, And after these things I saw 
four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. There you go, security. They cannot be touched. And this is something that's really going to take place because if you continue uh, reading, you'll see that it's talking about the 12 tribes and it's 12,000 times those 12 of the tribes of um, Israel. They are the ones that are going to be sealed. They have a special mission. For those who don't like the idea that Israel is people of of the Lord, they're going to have a hard time when they find themselves in midst of all of this. He made a promise. He is a promise keeper. Okay, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 19. Chapter 2, 19. Let's start with 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So remember, we have the Holy Spirit, and he's supposed to speak to us from within and remind us we are not of this world, though we walk in this world. We are separated. We are sealed. After we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we again belong to the Creator. Let's go to Jeremiah 32. I found this very interesting because it's got a double kind of history. The Lord had spoken with Jeremiah, and he says, you know, I want you to go to your uncle's son's house, and I want you to buy a certain property. And it was in the most difficult time. He says, uh, you know, you'll find him. It's a very, very interesting chapter. I, I invite anyone who really wants to know how the Lord maneuvers things. Mind you, Nebuchadnezzar was to come in and take his people captive. It was because due to their lackness, they always fell into the tradition, the uh, idolatry and all of this stuff. He speaks to Jeremiah and he says, listen, why don't you tell them if they just relax and be willing to do what he says, they are going to save their life. But if they do not render themselves, then they are going to be killed. But mind you, he sends him to do what to us would look like something very crazy. I want you to buy this property. He says, okay, that's fine. He goes and he buys the property. The Lord says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, this, evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel that they may continue many days. Many days, they don't tell you what many days is, but usually when they use the word many days, they're talking about years. And when the Bible talks about many years, you can be sure that it could pass hundreds, thousands of years. So he's given a deed. He says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. 
And after Jeremiah is kind of thinking things out, and he's telling him, and, uh, I know you're this, and he's praising him and speaking over the attributes and everything, he says, but wait a minute. I mean, these people are going to take over. How in the world? What, what in a desert? How are we going to have those houses and fields and vineyards what good are they there's not going to be anybody here and it's so curious because it's not only for that time it wasn't only for when Nebuchadnezzar left and the other you know we're talking about future also because when you look into the old testament you will see how in the book of Isaiah the prophet Isaiah the question is, can a nation be formed in one day? It's like, is it possible to give birth to a nation in a day? And what's so curious is that in May 14th, 1948, they were given land which was only by mouth, word of mouth, and they did not literally get that particular land which they were supposed to receive. They were given something else that was totally barren. But the thing is, is that since God speaks, and when he speaks, life comes out through prophecy, it comes out. Whatever's going to take place is going to take place. Why? Because he sealed it. It's his promise. It's his property. He says it and that's it. It's going to happen. So all of a sudden, one of the prophecies where it speaks of that barren, arid land was going to bloom. There was going to be water and all this beautiful stuff. Just like he bought that property, he said, For thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. And it's, it's really amazing that when the Lord promises something, he keeps his promise. Okay, the seal also assures that its contents will be secret. You notice one of them was a sealed and the other one was and this evidence which is open and put them in an earthen vessel. One was to be known and one was to be sealed. So we look at Deuteronomy 29, 29, 29, 29. And it says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And the law is from Genesis to Revelations. A lot of people think that he came to abolish Many things, he only took away the, the rights because he himself became the lamb, the sacrificial lamb of God. Now we can go to Revelation 5.2. Revelation 5.2. And it says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals Thereof. There was only one in Revelation that could open up that book. It was sealed to prevent anyone from knowing. And it says that the secrets belong to the Lord our God. So whenever he wants to reveal something, he will reveal it. Let's look at 10.4. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices I was about to write and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not see 
whenever the Lord would speak to someone and say something had to be sealed, it was supposed to be kept secret until he who is the owner of the secrets decided that he was going to let it go. And in the seventh verse of the same chapter 10, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants and the prophets. That means that there is an established time for this. First John chapter 3, 1 to 3. First John chapter 3, 1 to 3. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. See, there's an established time. Right now, we ourselves, here, we ourselves, we talk about here in uh, chapter 4, where it, it speaks about, about the um, ministries, the ministers of God. It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of of Christ. See how things work together. The Holy Spirit is the giver of these uh, ministries. Not everybody can be. And yet in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Romans chapter 12, it tells you that the same Spirit gives different types of works. We're talking about to the believers. You know how they say love and marriage, you can't have one without the other, right? There's no way that marriage would exist, would be healthy unless there is love. So love and marriage, you can't have one without the other. You'll see that it's the same thing with the sealing and the way the Lord gives the, the work of the Spirit and how He pleases us. Because when the Holy Spirit works within us, we're able to feel a little piece of heaven. He lets us experience. That bond goes together. See? The works of the Spirit, when we receive what is called the earnest, we are receiving an inheritance. So first comes the seal, then the inheritance. Let me see what it says in First um, Peter. It's a little long, but I'll read it. It says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath forgot, begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, 
who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You see how certain things are made secret. We will get to know things. Right now, we know only to where we have to know. It's the things that we know now, and they're really how much more can be given to us if we can't even handle what we have before us. It says, to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. See, we, we struggle every single day. So whatever it is that God gives us now, it's a piece of heaven for us. There's a lot of, a lot of uh, fighting, a lot of wrestling going on, spiritual realm. Who, uh, Satan and his demons do not sleep. So it's a struggle. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, whose prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. You know, we have a blessing. We are able to be bearers of the gospel. First, we were sinners. Now, we come into repentance. Now, the best story that I have heard of where we can relate is when Abraham, before he dies, he asks Eliezer, to find a wife for his son, Isaac. You'll find that in Genesis chapter 24. I'll try to be as brief. 24. I'm going to have to do some skipping. 24, 3 to 4. It says... And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Skip over 9 and 10. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Naor. Okay, I'm going to skip, a big skip, 51 to 58. It says, Behold, Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go and let her be thy master's son's wife as the Lord had spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to the mother precious things. 
I'm going to skip a little because the idea is, is that that's exactly what happens when we come to the Lord. First, we come to repentance. Then the Holy Spirit works with us and then he gives us gifts. And this is the most beautiful story to portray exactly. Abraham is symbolic of the father. Eliezer, symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And Rebecca is symbolic of the church of Christ. Now let's skip to 63 to 65. Same chapter, 24. 24. 63 to 65. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. That is so interesting because when she understood that she belonged to Isaac, she automatically separated herself. She covered herself. The reason why they uh, used to cover themselves in, in those times was to say, I belong to someone else. You can't look upon me and desire me. Amen. And this is the point. This is where the Holy Spirit leads the sinner to repentance, from the repentance to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, to be a believer. The Holy Spirit works, works the works of the Spirit where we can produce the fruit of the Spirit, and that, whomever wants to look for that, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, shows you the difference of the fruit. It doesn't say fruits. It says the fruit of the Spirit compared to the works of the flesh. The works of the Spirit is marvelous. I can tell you, and my son who's here, he's always the one to prepare uh, the program to make sure that everything turns out right. He can tell you if God really worked in my life. Uh, no, I wasn't into prostitution or never took drugs, but I was really and truly in the bottomless pit. I had no control in my life looking for what I consider the importance of love. And the Lord did a radical change. And the fruit of that, of me recognizing that I needed the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, is what produced in my son to come to the Lord, to be able to be a blessing to all of us, to himself, Still waiting for one. And my daughter, who's a pastor. They are a blessing in my life. This is the work of the Spirit. This is what the Lord does in our lives. Where, where do I want to lead you? Well, I want to lead you at the feet of the Lord. My desire is that, just like the Lord had mercy on my life, I would like to know that I came in time that whenever it was that you tuned into one of my videos, for now, it's just my voice. Pretty soon I'll be back to doing videos, God willing. But it's uh, the voice of a real person. I'm not a robot. I'm not a machine of any kind. I'm trying to transmit what the Lord gives me. He's working on me every single day to assure that I don't go to the place that a lot of people are denying. It's not something that he really wants. If it was like that, he could have easily just destroyed everything and forget about his creations. 
could have made a new race, I don't know. But that's not what he did. He became so personal that he took it upon himself to come down as a man, to go through things of life, many struggles. The Bible doesn't tell you everything. The Bible tells you the most important things that you and I must know. But it doesn't tell you if they went through certain needs. Because what the Word of God is, is just good news. And, and yes, there, are, there, there have been killing and nothing that God is really proud over. But you know, all those things, all that destruction... Is really works not of the enemy because we were given a will. We can do right or we can do wrong. We choose to do right or to do wrong. Every time something happens, something very tragic, it's the human, the human portion, killing, drugs, prostitution. You name it. It's the human. The human needs to come at the feet of the Lord. Needs to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Needs to, to bring down his, his pride. Do you know that Satan, Satan's sin was pride? He wanted to go above. You know, and I always call them the helium brothers. They need a string because they keep going up, up, and up. And if you don't pull them down, they just keep going up there. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Humans have a tendency to do a lot of falling. God is not there applauding and laughing when they fall. He extends his hand, his mercy. It's time that we project God who he really is. He's not a tyrant. He doesn't wait in the corner, you know, with a bat. That's not his style. He gave himself for all humanity. The word of God says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came with that purpose the first time, but once he does what he had to do, Hello, that's up to you and I. We're the ones that have to do whatever it is that is necessary. And what is necessary? Just come to the Lord humbled. Be honest. You're a sinner. You say, I am a sinner. And all you got to do is do something so simple. These little words. You got to mean it though. God, I have sinned against you. I ask your forgiveness. I ask to be washed in the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And that your Holy Spirit may guide me. And that you may write my name in the book of life. I ask you this with all my heart in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, Lord. I ask you, Lord, that they may receive healing spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially, Lord. I claim salvation over these people. Don't know when they're going to receive this message, Lord, but I believe you, Father. I give you thanks in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This has been Rosemary Santiago from On Wings of an eagle, look for a place that only teaches you the truth. God bless you.